Remember that our definition of success for the purposes of this book is living your life's purpose while embracing joy and resilience as you do. It is described as a harmony of service, achievement and happiness. What is success if you cannot enjoy it? Fulfillment is about living with purpose, using your strengths and tapping into your passions. Follow your dreams and focus on being in service to others. If you live in the moment, aiming to be your best and do your best, success will surely follow. Measure success by your own standards, not society's. One indicator of success is making a positive difference in the world. Everybody can be great because anybody can serve, Martin Luther King Jr. once said. If you learn from the mistakes along the way and persevere through the tough times, your journey to success will ultimately make you a better person. If you give, you're going to get. Giving energizes you. Give to those in need. When you know you did the best you could, you go to bed happy. Take a step forward and use the resources that God has already put in your hands. Don't make excuses. If you really, really want it, you won't have a bunch of excuses. If you do, it's a sign that you don't want it badly enough. Be willing to share and mentor others. There is more than enough business for everyone. King Solomon in Ecclesiastes 3 verse 12 to 13. There is nothing better for people than to be happy and to do good while they live, that each of them may eat and drink and find satisfaction in all their toil. This is the gift of God. Abraham Lincoln once noted that most people are about as happy as they make up their minds to be. If he was right, then happiness is a choice, an approach and an attitude that we choose to carry into our work, our relationships and our lives. The biggest predictor of happiness as it relates to money is not how much of it you make, but whether or not you can pay your bills. The easier it is to pay your bills, the happier you'll likely become. Bottom line, living below your means increases happiness. Most people are more concerned with making as much or more than their peers than they are with the actual amount they make. People feel better when they are above average. It is better to give than to receive. People report higher levels of happiness when they spend their money on others than when they spend it on themselves. Upward social comparisons are devastating to your happiness. Television is said to have a negative impact on your happiness because it encourages social comparison and skews your perception of your relative position in society. Embrace this phrase as your mantra. Progress is a process. When you spend too much time comparing yourself to others, you take your eyes off your vision and sow unnecessary seeds of doubt and insecurity. Dream big. Then give yourself a realistic timeline in which to manifest the dream. Give yourself the time and space to succeed and measure success by your definition, not everyone else's. Even though you may not be where you want to be, be grateful for the strides you've made in areas that are difficult. Make a list of what you are doing right. Stop making comparisons. Happiness is not simply about what happens in your life. It is about what you do, how you think, and the environments you put yourself in. One of the most robust findings of happiness research, that people who believe in God are happier, says Dr. Richard Laird. Wisdom is the principal thing, therefore get wisdom, and in all your getting, get understanding, Proverbs 4 verse 7 reminds us. Happiness is subjective. No one can tell you how happy you are. You are the sole judge. Make up your mind to be happy. Make the choice to do as Psalm 118 verse 24 instructs. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Lighten up. Laugh. Notice the beauty around you. Appreciate the people before you. Look for the opportunity you have today to make a positive difference for someone. Choose today to tap into the divine gifts that have been bestowed upon you. Positive emotion is a powerful strategy for the high-achieving, resilient woman. 
Happy women have stronger immune systems and lower levels of cortisol, the chemical the body produces when under stress. Only 10% of your happiness is based on circumstances and 40% is based on your intentional daily actions. Research suggests that happiness actually causes more productivity and higher income. So, while it is often thought that success causes happiness, it may actually be the other way around. Be intentional about taking actions daily that lead to authentic happiness. Build confidence by only using words that strengthen you, not weaken you. Learn to speak well of yourself. Successful women know they can't go in alone and they know the importance of filling in the gaps in their own strengths. But both scripture and research show that when you focus on building your innate strengths rather than fixing your weaknesses, success flows more easily and authentically. God's strength is perfected in our weakness. Appreciation for the steps that have led to your best moments in life may give you the roadmap you need to get unstuck. Learning and growth often happen through the failures and adversities of life. But if you make a habit of also learning and appreciating the lessons of relationships that work, careers that soar, and lives that are meaningful, you empower yourself to overcome the inevitable obstacles you'll face on the path to success. It may sound silly, but I kept my goal in front of me. It was taped on the inside of my medicine cabinet so that when I opened the cabinet to get my toothbrush in the mornings, I would see it. Even though I didn't always read it, it was always there and I think subconsciously it influenced my actions and always made me look towards the future which was bright. I think success really is just a habit. So I think one of the conditions that empowers me to be at my best is having like-minded people around me who are moving in the same direction. I'm also empowered by having some public accountability, telling people what I am going to do and then needing to come back and talk about it in an encouraging environment. If you're going to succeed at higher levels and in new areas of life, it is imperative that you know who you are at your best. Right now, you have the strength within you to grow into the kind of woman who can accomplish all that is in your heart. Let your past successes, no matter how small, ignite the confidence, hope and creativity that will also ignite future successes. Appreciative inquiry is a skill. Choose to hone the skill as a strategic approach to success. Learning to raise your awareness about your strengths by noticing how you use them and the conditions under which they flourish is a powerful success secret. Among the many tools I have used with clients in coach training programs and corporate training sessions is the Values in Action VIA, Character Strength Survey. The test examines the gifts you possess that emerge naturally as you engage in challenges and opportunities in your life. This is why it is important to enlist in the help of others to get a better assessment of your strengths. Remember, your mission and purpose in life, while it may be enjoyable and fulfilling for you, is all about making a difference for others. You have tapped into your strengths at pivotal moments in your life and you tap into them in the mundane moments too. Because I could see the invisible, I had enough faith to take a leap and pursue my dream. Hebrews 11 verse 1 says, Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. When you begin to see your strengths, you give yourself permission to hope for bigger possibilities. Who are the people who can see your strengths clearly and reflect them back to you? Keep them around and listen to them. In other words, you should directly engage your strengths to overcome your weaknesses. The bottom line? Focusing on weaknesses is a much less effective tool than focusing on strengths, but ignoring your performance and opportunities for growth altogether is destructive. The point of raising your awareness about the places where you are weak is to prevent those weaknesses from sabotaging your success. Remember, successful women think differently. They are able to notice when their own behaviours lead them away from success rather than toward it and they are flexible enough to make changes and adjustments to get what they really want. 
Leverage your strengths and strengths of others. Successful women don't ignore the obvious. They know where they are weak and they look for ways to shore up those weaknesses by finding others whose strengths they can tap into. Pay attention to others' strengths and weaknesses. Don't rely on people to accomplish tasks that they are not uniquely equipped to accomplish. When managing others, giving strength-based feedback is more effective than focusing on weaknesses. Women who are great managers give feedback. Stop focusing on your weaknesses. Start building on your strengths. Discipline trumps talent when it comes to high levels of achievement. Stretch yourself to build success muscles. Sheer grit is your secret weapon. Successful women know discipline is their friend. Self-control trumps talent when it comes to success. Make every effort to add to your faith goodness, and to goodness, knowledge, and to knowledge, self-control, and to self-control, perseverance, and to perseverance, godliness, and to godliness, mutual affection, and to mutual affection, love. Self-control is directly tied to delayed gratification. First, recognize that you need a sense of gratification that is provided by accomplishment along your road to a goal. If the only cause for celebration and gratification is the finish line, you may give up long before you get there. Creating a sense of instant gratification, even if you personally manufacture it, is a great way to use the pursuit of happiness to the advantage of your goals. By asking myself a few simple but powerful questions, I became aware of some key factors that enable discipline and self-control, including a sense of continual gratification while moving towards the ultimate daily goal. And manufacturing instant gratification keeps me on track to the ultimate gratification of reaching the bigger goal. Passion certainly fuels perseverance, and discipline often requires that stick to its spirit. Successful women feel fear, but through a growth mindset, they learn to move forward in spite of their fears. They practice with great discipline the skills they need in order to move forward. The key to developing self-control is to remember that it is like a muscle. You build it up over time. When practiced in challenging but not overwhelming doses, the muscle becomes strengthened. Success is a harmony of service, happiness and achievement. Goal setting falls in the achievement category. Happily successful women don't set goals, write them down and then stuff them in a drawer. They get busy taking action that will bring the goals to pass. Whether your goal is to change careers, eliminate drama from your life, pay off your debt or run a half marathon, use these strategies to stretch yourself. Pick one, just one. Make a decision to pursue it. A decision indicates your belief that it is possible. Once a decision is made, action must follow. Pinpoint your inspiration. When are you inspired? Your motivation comes from within. Find a motivated partner. Reach out for support. Create a vision board. Keep your goal in front of you. Expect a challenge and determine to keep pressing forward. When you stumble, don't give up. Get up. Plan for the obstacles up front. Remember that there is often more to learn from failure than success. So when your journey to the goal line meets a hurdle, don't stop. Reward and recharge after each milestone. You'll get to your destination soon enough. So enjoy the journey. Celebrating effort over talent or ability is a key to motivating and inspiring success. Speak life into your dreams by saying only that which will reinforce your goal of developing more discipline and self-control in your life.